Uh, we are here with John Connolly, who's the CEO of Interblock. Uh, and John, uh, welcome. Thank you. Good to be back. It's, it is good to be back. Uh, John, it's been a while since we've had a chance to overview um, Interblock, and a lot has happened in, since the last G2E. Uh, give us a little update on uh, what you've been doing and where you expect to go tomorrow. Well, obviously, I'm sure you've heard many times in the past week about COVID and the impact to the gaming industry. We, we utilize that at Interblock as an opportunity to really, I would say, catch up on a lot of things that had fallen behind <clears throat> in our product roadmap and innovation. Uh, obviously, with the industry shut down for a period there in 2020, uh, we were very aggressive in, in trying to um, tackle some projects on innovation that we hadn't gotten to. Uh, so we see, we saw, we utilized as best we could the opportunity during COVID to to focus on R and D, come out of our of COVID with a, a a large portfolio of products that would be here at G two E this year, um, and then it's been a roller coaster ride because as we went into COVID, like everybody, it was extremely you know concerning uh, for the industry and and unbeknownst to us, it was going to be a catalyst. Uh, much more than we ever anticipated for electronic table games um, and social distancing. So that really, um, you know, that really surprised us, and and it hasn't dissipated since since we started coming out. So it's been, it's been, uh, it's been quite the the 24 month period almost here. Yeah, we've seen that uh, throughout uh, a lot of different industries where COVID has be become an accelerant. Yeah. And electronic table games obviously have been a trend for a long time. Uh, where would you say that you are in the maturation cycle of that, of the table games segment of the industry? I think we're in its infancy. Um, I, you know, under two percent of the North American market um, floor percentage are electronic table games. Although that's that's growing quite quickly at the moment. So as far as saturation, we're not even close. Um, you know, obviously, the COVID impacts of COVID on labor, um, operating expenses within casinos, a lot more emphasis on reducing those. Um, and then COVID, I think, created a whole new generation and player base for our products. It really brought players that hadn't tried electronic table games over to ETGs. And as a result, when COVID, we started to come out of COVID and live table games opened back up, <clears throat> the revenue on our products, the net one per day, um, occupancy has only continued to climb. So, um, you know, I, 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 we feel very fortunate that we were able to provide the industry with, with an automated, um, in some cases, you know, human intervention product line, product portfolio that allowed the social distancing not only for dealers but for players, um, and that that obviously resonated and. And here we are. Yeah, and one of the things I've seen is I've actually seen casinos promote electronic table games as you know the safer choice in the COVID environment. Yeah, and I think the dealers are also putting emphasis on that. Um, you know, the good news is is that there's you know there's over a hundred thousand live tables in North America, and I think the new trend we're seeing from the major operators, actually, and, and private casino entities. Um, is yielding up the live table game mix. You know, I was saying yesterday in a panel, you know, as we go to the airport now um, and we check in at the airport, we don't tend to go up to a human being. We tend to use a kiosk. Um, and on the strip right now, they're implementing kiosks for checking in at hotels. <clears throat> Player acceptance, uh, familiarity is, is increasing by the month. Um, you combine that with online activity and the North American market now with legalized forms of wagering um, and their propensity to use a handheld device or a computer screen, I think ties directly into Interblock and our products. Um, so as a result, um, you know, we see the, the potential of, and we see the, the demand by operators yielding those live tables up to $25, anything below uh, automating, using automation technology to, to increase handle, a house advantage, uh, reduce operating expenses, um, in this environment, uh, and and that's really really taking off. Um, and we've always known it as an industry. We've known five dollar tables, we lose money. And all, when you look at all the direct and indirect costs, a five ten dollar live table, uh, an overflow pit, 
I mean, it's utilized under 30 hours a week in many cases, and the rest of the time it, it sits there dormant, taking up valuable square footage. Um, so with technology, as within the airline industry or as I was describing checking into a hotel, it's time for live table games, I think, to take that next step in its evolution. Doesn't mean they won't be there, but it'll be there probably more for a niche, and we'll use technology to drive, um, obviously, a great player experience, but a lot more profitability for the casino operators. So, um, omni-channel is you know, one of our buzzwords. Is that what you're describing, that you'll be part of that, um, you'll be an omni-channel distributor of entertainment? We're heading that direction. I think our stadium product that um, last time I saw you, um, we had not yet had it approved in the state of Nevada. It was in many other places for a few years. And from January till now, and in you know, approximately eight months, uh, we've installed close to 21 stadiums in Nevada. Uh, about 85% of the Las Vegas Strip and downtown now have a form of a stadium from Interblock, which is a social environment. It's a it's a different mechanism by which players can come and, and have a gaming experience uh, rather than being in a solitary environment, as you find a lot of times on a slot machine, or somewhat being restrictive in a live table game where you may only have five positions. We have stadiums, I and mean, we have stadiums that are hundreds of seats in some places, or over 100 seats, um, down to 15 seats. So it's completely scalable as well, both size, uh, footprint, and product offering. So can I play interblock games on my cell phone? Well, that's a great question. Um, I would say the HTML5 version of our product um, is, is coming soon. Um, we are, as I think everybody, looking at online quite aggressively in the coming year, 2022. Um, fortunately for us, or unfortunately, depending how you look at it, uh, this COVID and the acceleration and growth of our company um, has kept us very busy on the traditional casino space, just purely scaling the company to be able to absorb the, the demands uh, coming during and coming out of COVID that we've experienced, uh, which, which have not dissipated, as I said earlier. One of the COVID impacts throughout lots of industries has been supply chain disruptions. How have you been affected and how are you working through that? Yeah, this is... Uh, this is a challenge, to say the least. I mean, various components. It, it's, it's frustrating, I think, to a lot of my peers as well. You could have 99% of the products needed to produce a unit, or the components, I'm sorry, build a material, and you're missing one. That's all it takes. So uh, there's definitely certain components that are uh, in short supply. Um, I have to give a lot of credit to my team within the company. They have, they've really been, um, innovative and, and hardworking in their, their ability to maintain the demand for our company in production. And so far, yes, as our lead time extended from you know, pre-COVID, you know, pre it was you know, six to eight weeks to receive a product from Interblock, and we hit a peak of over, uh, just slightly over 12 weeks because of supply chain. It's now come back to 10 and dropping. Um, and again, I give, I give my team complete credit for that ability. Great. Uh, if, so if you were to look three or four years out, what kind of company will Interblock be? You know, uh, we're learning every day about electronic table games. Um, you're going to see a lot of new products in our booth that, um, you know, that are just hitting the market and the numbers are, are even surprising to us. You know, this is one of those areas of the gaming floor that's, again, as I said, it's, it's just beginning. So uh, unlike slots, you know, casino systems or traditional table games, they've been around for decades um, in various shapes and sizes. Electronic table games, although the company's existed for 30 plus years, it was predicated on primarily a mechanical roulette. And now we have brought and intentionally, strategically, that product offering both horizontally, as I've said in the past, which now you know, we have you know, over 12 different product segments or silos within the company designed specifically for a certain type of player. We realize that not one player uh, or all players play one product. They're very much, uh, as you find in, and I'll use the slot business as an example, you have your, you know, your high limit, 
you know, you have your $10, $25, $100, and then you also have your penny games. Um, so, and your, and your math behind that can be time on device, it can be volatility. Very similar in the ETG world. Um, so for us horizontally, the scope by which we are expanding and then the ways we're distributing uh, vertically, uh, whether it be stadiums or automated or video, is still growing. Um, so it's long answer to your question. I think four years from now, we will still be slowly expanding the footprint of electronic table games uh, on casino floors. But as a company, I mean, at some point, we need to, we need to take that expertise and diversify um, and expand, whether it be into online or into certain segments of gaming uh, or periphery that, that's complementary to our, our skill sets and our strengths. Okay. And we'll be looking at those we already looked at those, right? So, one of the questions we ask uh, each time is, um, "Will you be a public company at some point?" And every time you make me laugh. The right. difference this time is, since I saw you two years ago versus today, um, I can't talk about it. But we have done a transaction as a company. Uh, we're very excited about it, um, and we feel that it's positioned Interblock for the next chapter in the company's evolution. Um, that will take place by end of this year, beginning of next year. And from there, um, going public may not be the next step for us. It may be, as I mentioned, you asked, continue to expand the product offering of Interblock, uh, use our infrastructure and licenses and, and market penetration to create synergies with other products, other companies. Um, so never say never on the going public, but I do think, unlike other years, we are now at a, we've now created a foundation within our company that is capable of putting something on top or adjoining, and we're, we're looking at that quite aggressively. Okay, it'll be interesting to see what you're looking at. Uh, okay, we're at G2E. <laughs> You've already mentioned you have some really, uh, a new, you have new products uh, for people to see. What are some of the must-sees at your booth? Well, you know, we're installing a stadium, as we've talked in years past. The difference is, is pre-COVID versus now, it was, it was one of the fastest growing categories of the company. But since we've come out of COVID, our average installation is five days. Um, when I say average installation, we're installing a stadium every five days um, in just North America. That doesn't include international. So that and the roadmap behind that for our company um, is utmost importance. And I think at this G2E, we've done some pre-G2E events, and I, the feedback we've gotten has been incredibly positive. Um, people are surprised. Um, so I think that product category for us, the stadium, the Pulse Arena, and all that goes with it, features and functionality, is fascinating to see what the team's been able to come up with and innovate. On top of that, the standalone products, the, the single seat concepts, uh, the universal cabinet um, is really month over month continues to climb. Uh, players have become more familiar with it. There's definitely a following. Great way for someone who doesn't understand table games to try and learn. Um, so I think the universal cabinet, I mean, obviously there's more, but the universal cabinet and the stadiums and perhaps the golden ball, which is a unique play action. We think we finally found a way to do a side bet on a mechanical roulette that players want to play and will help increase that house advantage from 5.26 to something much more. Um, and that product's in the field and the numbers are incredibly impressive and the feedback's been great. So I would I'd probably limit it to those three. Well, uh, you always have, Interblock always has one of the most uh, entertaining, well constructed, well designed, thought out booths and uh, we look forward to being there. Thank you, John. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you.